Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best-selling author, and the only three-time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the podcast. This is your host, Seth Green. Today, I have the good fortune to be joined by Josh Elledge. Josh is a U.S. Navy veteran. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Who, who launched upmyinfluence.com to help agencies, consultants, coaches, and other high-ticket B2B service providers skyrocket their sales. He also started savingsangel.com, which grossed more than $6 million in sales with zero paid ads. He's a keynote speaker, writes a syndicated newspaper column to 1.1 million readers, and regularly appears on more than 75 TV stations across the country. Josh, thanks so much for joining us. Seth, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so let's go back in time a little bit. How did Up My Influence get started? Uh, quite unintentionally, actually. So Savings Angel is the company I launched about, gosh, it was about 15 some years, 15 and a half years ago. Uh, I was got to a point where, you know, I wasn't really needed in the day to day so much. So I had some time to kill and a mentor of mine said, just go serve, like go find uh you know, like minority owned, women owned. In my case, I worked with a lot of um, pro bono uh, veteran owned businesses and just go and do stuff. And um, my claim to fame with like how I had grown Savings Angel was that I was very active in the media. I'd been in, you know, at that point, you know, over a couple thousand times, you know, mostly a lot of TV and newspaper and so forth. So, so that's kind of where I reached out and, and offered to help, served on boards, um, a lot of pro bono workshops and mentoring that sort of thing. And, um, you know, funny thing is that, you know, if you're just out there doing good stuff, people take note of that. And I, uh, I actually got offers uh, to do PR for other companies. And I, I called up a friend of mine. I'm like, you know, I didn't go to school for PR. It, would I be, would I get in trouble for practicing PR without a license? Oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> He said, no, man, if someone wants to give you money, go for it, brother. And so I did. And um, so that was kind of the first iteration of Up My Influence and kind of makes a little bit more sense with the name um, was was really about, you know, attracting, you know, turning um, thoughtful entrepreneurs into media celebrities. But along the way, you know, we ran into the same situation. I think a lot of consultants and agencies run into where, you know, I would speak, like I got to, you know, speak to the Tony Robbins audience. I got to, you know, speak at some marketing conference, podcasting conferences and so forth. And those were good for business. Um, but then I would have like this June, July, August, like nothing's going on like event wise. And new sales were kind of dipping down a little bit. I'm like, okay, there's got to be something I could do. And so that's where we really just kind of focused on, um, I'm sure you're a big fan of Bob Berg, the go-giver, right? And Absolutely. that's that's it. It is just like, you know what? I, I, I am not a salesy kind of transactional advertising kind of guy. I'm just not... It just doesn't work well with my personality. I feel too much pressure. Then I don't like the process of selling, but I do love relationships. And I do love connecting with other people and just finding out if I can be of help. And if I can, cool. If not, that's okay. <laughs> you know, and just, so I'm out there just planting seeds. So yeah, so we, um, you know, we took our podcast, The Thoughtful Entrepreneur, and just really just leveraged it as a networking tool. And it really became the ultimate networking tool and the relationships I've been able to build as a result of that um, 
you know, have, have now put us as on my influence a position where that's all we did because we had one client um, and that client said, you know, the media is all well and good, Josh, but uh, I know what you guys are doing, you know, from the networking and sales standpoint, hook me up. And so we did. And uh, she was a, uh, she was doing like a $25,000 mastermind with, uh, for um, business leaders in the hemp CBD and cannabis space. And we're like, okay, we'll give it a shot. She ended up closing seven of those within 90 days. It was $175,000. I'm like, man, that's, that's good money. And so, yeah, so that's <laughs> that. I'm like, well, maybe we're in the wrong business. So I like this, right? This is a pattern. And uh, Savings Angel was an accidental company as well. But it's just like, I love this idea of just being out there, doing good stuff, listening, seeing where you can bring value and be of service. And if you can, you know, just kind of be open to that and show up and serve. Amen to all of that. So um, if for our agencies, coaches, consultants, high ticket B2B sales, listening and watching what does Up My Influence do for them to help them grow now? Because you've evolved over the years. Yeah. So, so it, about two years ago, we actually let go before, before the pandemic or, or maybe right at the beginning of the pandemic, we just let go of all of our PR clients. I'm like, I, I felt like I was in this position where we're, we're kind of doing like B level work with those guys. Like it was good, not amazing. But then we kept having some pretty good successes. So today, and so that's all we do today is, is we facilitate high level introductions on a regular basis. So assuming that the, the, the person that, that, that we're talking with, they have to be high authority. They need to also, um, the culture, like just values wise, like they have to be relationship first based. Um, if they are just sales, 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 sell, you know, automation, you know, just people are numbers kind of, it's not a fit for us. Um, but if you don't mind, like if generally your authority and your expertise, you know, it kind of sells itself and you are okay with just being in a position where you can show up and, and build relationships on a regular basis. Do you like that? That's a really good fit for us. And so what we'll do is we'll take that personality and just say, okay, great. We're going to put you in a position where you're going to probably have about two to three high level introductions every single week for the rest of your life. That's awesome. That's a incredible offer to have. What do you think are some of the biggest mistakes you see entrepreneurs like us making when it comes to trying to grow our business and grow our network and our net worth? Yeah, I'm of the opinion, and again, just philosophy, right? Um, but my philosophy is that big ticket sales is is incredibly different than lower ticket sales. So um, I just look at my own behavior, and if somebody throws an ad in front of me or someone slides into my DM or my email or whatever, like I have a lot of barriers to just to protect myself from, you know, distractions, because I do have to be pretty focused. Um, but I'm not really going to uh, participate in an Ascension model funnel, right? So it's weird if someone says, hey, we do this, cool. Okay, good. Give me $7 for this Tripwire product. I'm like, what? That's just, it's weird. That's not how normal people act. Well, maybe they do. I, I So as a big ticket, you know, I, I, hire a lot of agencies and consultants and, and so forth. And I usually do business with all those people that I do business with. It's because we became friends first. I, I learned what they did. And I'm like, wow, I think I might really, I could use that. And so that we do business. So, so that's my philosophy, right? Is that, um, is, so the biggest mistake is that, um, Wonderful service providers, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, you know, consultants, coaches, et cetera, are approaching big ticket buyers with small ticket practices. And I just think that that's largely inappropriate. Um, and it's it's a non-starter. Like if you go into my DM and start selling at me, I'm sorry, but it's, it's a hard, I, I'm going to ignore you probably at first, and then I'm going to block you if you persist. So I don't want to be treated that way. And it's maybe it's my ego. I don't know. But, you know, it's just like I, I have limited time uh, that I can be present. Uh, and I have to make sure that I focus that, you know, because I've got a, I got a company to run. I've got, you know, 180 clients. Like I'm pretty, I'm pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think if you follow the levels of human intimacy, right? We don't go, you don't walk up to a girl you've never met in a bar before and not tap her on the shoulder and say, want to get married. 
Yeah. I mean, you're you going to get a drink thrown in your face. You're <laughs> going to get slapped 99 times out of 100. But yeah. as marketers, we're guilty of that all the time. Hey, yeah. you don't know me, like me, trust me. We have no relationship, but I put an ad in your newsfeed. Give me money. Go to bed with me. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So talk a little bit. You've achieved some incredible results for your clients. Talk yeah. a little bit about, you know, just one case study kind of here's what they came to me with. Here's mm. what we did for them. And here's like the magical transformation we were able to create. Yeah, you know, we just had this um, gent in Australia, David Lindsay, this one's pretty new. Um, and this doesn't always happen, right? But again, this is so important to say that whatever your intention is, and this is why we have to filter that pretty thoroughly to make sure we have values alignment with our clients. Not everyone works well with us. Um, but I believe that every person projects their intention before they ever open their mouth. Like it's, it, you can't fool consumers today. And in the case of David Lindsay, just leads with his heart, awesome guy, uh, works with, um, I believe, you know, employers that have, I think, 200 or more employees. Um, and he's a culture and leadership kind of consultant. Um, and so, um, you know, we, we got to talk and he's like, yeah, I, I love, you know, a relationship first approach as well. And so, um, you know, we said, well, great. So what we're going to do is we're going to start leading a la Bob Berg. You're going to lead with a lot of generosity. You're going to invest into these relationships and in, in, in a very authentic way. He did that great values alignment, uh, very first call landed a $50,000 engagement. Now, you know, obviously, you don't Best learn that right out of no the gate. guarantee of standard success. Insert standard legal disclaimers here. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. So <laughs> I told him. I said, "Listen, awesome. That doesn't always happen. Um, uh, you know who really does uh, tend to knock it out of the park with you know? And again, you could just generically follow my advice. You don't have to work with me. Um, you know, but just leading with generosity. You know who work this works really well for is people that have had. Um, a lot of good conversations over the past year. They had buying signals, but then the person didn't pull the trigger for whatever. If if you're looking at, and you've got by now, you've got a list of like maybe like 20, 30, 40 people in that category. Man, if you aren't going back and genuinely reinvesting in those relationships, and I don't care what it is, man, you could just invite, give to them authentically, give of your time, give of your effort, give of your exposure, make connections for them, find out the things that you can do for those people. It will pay you back. You cannot, I believe that you cannot out give the market. And if you are waking up and you just see dollar signs in your eyes, when you look at a group of people, it's going to be really hard for you to succeed today. I just believe that, right? Because I think that, um, you know, another big mistake would be to assume that audiences are not as smart as we are because we're brilliant marketers. I think it's just far better to just be incredibly transparent uh, and, you know, lay it all out there and let the chips fall where they may, if I'm saying that expression correctly. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you are 100%. You mentioned hundreds of clients. Obviously, you've served even more than that. Talk about the team you've built. Yeah, so we have about, um, I'd say, 30, 35 folks on the team right now. It takes a small army to do what we do, um, but I, I, I am very, very lucky. And so for those who, you know, right now you're in the process where you're trying to hire, um, I am a big, big fan of hiring for personality and personality type uh, and the soft skills. Um, and, and what I know, I know my weaknesses and I know uh, the, you know, the strengths and weaknesses of other team members as well. And we also know that uh, certain positions just need people that are wired in a certain way in order to succeed. So if I get, for example, if you're a fan of like Enneagram as a fine personality matrix or whatever, um, I'm very much a type seven. Um, I need my variety. I need, <laughs> I'm, I'm not in love with the details. <laughs> I love to just you know, kind of be in the moment, be present for people. Uh, you know, I'm definitely kind of that idea oriented entrepreneur. So I very intentionally need to hire for that. My COO, Elisa, is just 
remarkable. We've been friends for 15, 20 years. Uh, yeah, it's close to 20 years now. And she's been in that role. Uh, she's been without my influence now for about, I think, let's say five, six years. So she is very much the Roy. She is the Roy Disney. If I'm a Walt Disney, she's very much the Roy. She's, she gets the stuff done. <laughs> that is absolutely awesome. Um, the, all the success you've achieved for yourself and your clients in your serial entrepreneurial companies, mm -hmm. what's your biggest challenge now? Yeah. And, and by the way, Seth, that's very kind of you to say all the success. Like we're doing OK. Uh, so I, I don't want to feel like I'm, you know, on easy street or anything like that. I am absolutely engaged in, you know, in 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 the game, so to speak. But um, yeah, so biggest challenge right now is there are always a lot of moving pieces, you know, when. And that very much just kind of comes with the stage of business. And, you know, when you're at the solo stage, man, life is pretty easy at the solo stage. I'm not going to lie. I remember those days, you know, you start to build out a team and things get more complicated. Um, and then, you know, you start laying out your vision for where this thing is going. And it's nothing that keeps me up at night too much. But, um, there's a lot of pieces there. And what I can say is that if it were just me alone, I would not sleep. Um, so I love the idea of, of hiring well, maybe investing more than, you know, just hiring VAs, uh, truly investing in talent. Um, because that talent will pay you back and make your life so much easier. When you have a, a, a right-hand person uh, who can look at you in the eyes and say, Josh, Seth, I, I got this. We're, we're good. I'm going to take care of this for you. You don't need to worry about it. Man, you can't put a price on. Well, I suppose you can put a price on. But, but to me, that is like, that's the dream for me is just like give pro providing opportunity for others, but also creating a relationship dynamic where ultimately I can make my life easier. I don't want to do the hustle and grind for 80 hours a week. I'm at the stage of my life. I no thanks. Like I did that. <laughs> you know, I'm now at the stage where, you know, I want to create other opportunities for others. You know, I want to keep refining and improving, you know, just iterative improvements day after day after day after day after day is what we obsess on at this point. Awesome. I'm sorry if that wasn't a great answer. Was like, I don't know if you were hoping for like, you know, <laughs> something that I'm truly uh, you know, I I so I see the road ahead. And I recognize it's a big honking elephant and it's going to take a long time to digest that guy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I would say it's just like, okay, I'm, I'm looking at the mountain trail and I'm kind of like, we'll get there, but man, there's a lot to do at this point. <laughs> I, I love it. That is an authentic answer. So I appreciate that. Your passion is obvious. What do you like best about what you're doing? Uh, no, no outcomes for other people. Like, like I'm good. Like I'm comfortable. I'm so grateful. Um, but you know, it, what I love is working with a client who, you know, when they begin engagement with you, they know it's an extension of risk on their part. And I do my best to try to map out and de, you know, try to limit the risk as, as best as possible and identify, you know, it's like every client starts with a SWOT analysis. You know, what's the weakness in us working together? What are the threats out there? You know, I've been doing this long enough now that I know where this thing can go sideways if it ever does. And we know how to prevent that and kind of work if that ever does happen. But I got to tell you, the greatest thing is when they say, uh, you know, it's it's working. It's, oh my gosh, you know, and, and them telling you, you don't know what this means to my family, you know, because they've been struggling and they've been trying to follow bad advice for years and to finally see it switch for them. And, you know, you know, that a new client, man, they have to take a step in faith. And, and, and that's an obligation to me. I, I don't take that lightly, but for them to have that success, that is by far, by far the greatest feeling at this point. Yeah. I mean, I can see how much you care. It is obvious. And I appreciate, respect, and admire that about you. For our folks who are watching and listening, who would love to learn more about what you're doing, where is the best place for us to send them? 
Yeah, sure. I'm always looking for great guests for our podcast, um, you know, and, and or, um, you know, if you're earlier stage in business and, and you want to learn the principles, I'll teach you for free. There's no sale uh, involved. And uh, we've got a quiz, we've got a, a master class, and I'll teach you everything. Um, I, I pretty much am a big fan of just tell everybody everything. And some people are going to say, perfect. That's exactly what I needed. I'm not in a position to make any investments. Cool. Love you. Keep rocking it. Right. But you know, some people will say, thank you for all the wisdom and knowledge. I don't want to do it myself. <laughs> and, and that's, you know, certainly there's opportunity there as well, but that, all of that, by the way, Seth, that, that thank you so much for asking. And that is at um, our website and that's www.upmyinfluence.com. All right. That is awesome. This has been Seth Green with Josh Elledge from upmyinfluence.com. Josh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Seth. It's an honor. Thanks everybody for watching or listening. We will see you or talk to you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level, but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.